In this video, basic concepts of modeling simulation and analysis of the Baratori mechanical systems is presented, and we will clarify the concepts of oscillations. Systems types are presented. Simulation of mass spring system and analysis with MATLAB is presented to see the oscillatory behavior for different initial conditions, masses and spring stiffnesses. If you are new, please subscribe for future notifications. Oscillation is defined as the process of repeating variations of any quantity or measure about its equilibrium value in time. Oscillation can also be defined as a periodic variation of a matter between two values or about its central value. There are different types of oscillators, for example longitudinal and torsional oscillators as shown. Now if you look at this oscillator, you will see that there's only a rigid body, and if it is released without any spring or being tied, it will move to the right side, and it will leave the screen, and we cannot talk anything about it, and there will be no oscillation. So what is missing? In fact, the missing thing is a spring, and we have this longitudinal oscillator with coordinate x that we can look at, and we can also see that there is a torsional equivalent, which is the so-called torsional oscillator. In this case, we are no longer talking about the mass, but about the mass that is rotating. So, we are talking about inertia, and we are talking about a different coordinate, which is angular coordinate denoted by a Greek letter phi. Another possibility could be the pendulum. It is another type of oscillator, which oscillates not due to the existence of a spring, but due to the existence of a gravity force. And of course, we can also think of possible combinations. In the case that you see here in the picture, we have the combination of the pendulum and the longitudinal oscillator. So, now if we are looking at a simple model of the system, we can distinguish between different system properties. The first example that you see here is that an oscillator may be undamped or damped. In fact, if we now look at this example here, we will see, this is the system that we have seen in the previous slide, with the mass here and a spring here. Now this is the undamped system, there's no damper involved. And if we are then looking at the system that we see here, additionally now we have a damper, for example a mass spring system immersed in liquid. The displacement or oscillatory response reduces with time and later in this series of videos, we will find out that this system reacts differently to the undamped system. The next differentiation is whether the system is free or we have forced oscillation. So again, this is the original system that we were talking about already, and now additionally, we have a force acting on the mass. And of course, the type of the force that we are using here will have an influence on the motion behavior of the system. And finally, we can also talk about tied or untied systems. The system that we had previously was a tied system. Again, this is also a tied system. We have now a second mass, but if we are looking at the two masses, we may also have an untied system where there is just a spring between the two masses. And the example that you see here could be, well, an example of a car which is towing a trailer, so this could be the trailer, and this could be the car that is towing the trailer. And then we have relative motion, just relative motion, between the two masses. In this case we have relative motion between these two masses, but also this mass must be shown as absolute motion. Okay now, let's do some simple basic mechanics for modeling the system, by looking again into the undamped system. So, the system is described by the parameters mass, as you can see here, by the parameter spring rate, and we have the coordinate x here. Now the first thing, that we need to do, is to draw the, so-called free body diagram in x direction. Free body diagram means, that we are just taking the mass and all the connections, that the mass has with the environment will be replaced by forces. So, in this case it means we just have the mass m with a coordinate x, and the only force, that we see in x direction is the spring force. The spring force is computed by the product of the spring rate k and the coordinate x, and you will also see, that the red arrow indicating this force is acting in the opposite direction than the x, coordinate. That means that if we now apply Newton's law, we formulate the product of mass times the acceleration, which is mathematically the second derivative of displacement with respect to time, and this product must equal the sum of all forces acting on the body. And in fact, if you look at the body, the only force that we have is this spring force, it is a restoring force, its direction is opposite to the coordinate, and that's why we apply the negative sign here. So minus k times x is the spring force. That is, as it's just one force, also the sum of all forces acting with regards to the Newton law. And then of course we can change this equation such, that we divide by m, we subtract minus k times x, which then gives this final differential equation. And you will see, that this differential equation is an equation of second order, because we have x double dot here, and it's linear, because x double dot and x appear only in linear fashion. 
Now, from this we can compute the so-called eigenfrequency of the system. And the eigenfrequency of the system is now the square root of k over m. And this eigenfrequency we will later relate to the frequency of the system. And now we can also replace k over m by the square of the eigenfrequency, and then this is now the final normalized second-order linear differential equation that describes the whole system. And you will see that we only have one single parameter, the eigenfrequency, that rules the behavior of this differential equation, and as such also rules the behavior of our system model. Now the question is what is the solution to this equation of motion, that is, the solution for x? And in fact, we can write down the solution in this way. So, we have the amplitude, a and the oscillation, that we can compute, is described by a cosine function, so the argument of the cosine function is eigenfrequency times the time t, and we subtract a so-called phase angle phi. So, looking more closely into it, we find some basic parameters. One parameter is x of t, the displacement at time t, that is exactly what you see here. This is what the displacement looks like, and it means that in this direction, we are talking about the coordinate x, and in this direction, we are talking about the time t. So, x of t is a times cosine omega times t minus the phase angle phi. Now the question is where do we find this amplitude in the diagram? This is not very difficult. In fact, we will see that the extremum that we can see here, this is exactly a. And of course, whenever we get an extremum we find a, even so to say in the other direction, this is also a. We can also distinguish the so-called time period. And, and the question now is, do we also see this phase angle in the diagram? And in fact, we can also see that this phase angle is the angle between t equal to zero up to the first extremum. In grammar school you have learned that, in order to find the extremum you just need to look at the first derivative. And it also means that this distance here is the phase angle phi. Well, if I say that this is the phase angle phi, and time t phi is the time at which the extremum occurs and is equal to phi over omega, and therefore, we can find phi equal to omega times t phi. We can see that the frequency increases as we reduce the time period and vice versa. The frequency of oscillation depends on the mass and spring stiffness. Okay, so it means that if we look at the diagram here, we are able to determine amplitude A. We can determine the time period T, and we can determine the phase angle phi. And if we do, so we will find out that we already know the basic parameters that describe the motion behavior. So, it's A, time period T and the phase angle phi. And once we have these values, we can also determine the eigenfrequency. The eigenfrequency of the system F underscore zero is 1 over T, where T is the time period. And from this eigenfrequency, by multiplying it with 2 times pi, we can also determine the so-called angular eigenfrequency, the one that we need here, in order to then also be able to compute the solution x of t for any given time t. And from here we can then start with a MATLAB file. We define mass of the body as m equals 750 kg stiffness coefficient of spring k equals 50,000, time of 0 to 1 seconds in increments of 10 milliseconds. Initial condition displacement x0 equals 0 0.01, initial condition velocity x.0 equals 0, then we define symbolic time variable t in system function. We obtain first and second derivatives and store in dx and d2x. The important function d solve solves the differential equation m d2x plus k times x equals 0 given the initial conditions above. Finally, we convert the symbolic expression or function x and x dot to MATLAB functions with handles x and x dot and evaluate these functions at points of time. The results are plotted together. This second plot is the same, but aesthetically more attractive, and provide better comparison. So now in order to be able to play around a little bit with a solution that you see here, we can change the mass, spring stiffness or initial conditions in MATLAB code, and then show how the solution changes with changing parameters. Two examples are shown here. The summary of the video is as follows. The first thing is that we've realized that dynamical systems are oscillating, and the main parameters that describe an oscillating system are mass and stiffness and for mass and stiffness you have also learned how to determine the so-called eigenfrequency. Additionally, systems may be damped or undamped, which means that in case of an undamped system, we just have to refer to mass and stiffness, but if a system is damped, we also need to refer to the damping coefficient. We also must distinguish between free oscillations and oscillations with excitations. So in the case of free oscillations, we have seen that we need to look at the boundary conditions. And with regards to oscillations with excitations, we have not yet discussed that in this presentation, but later we will present in a video. 
we can set up the so-called equations of motion ocean and if we do that we will end up with a linear differential equation of second order that describes a typical dynamical system and the solution to that differential equation system can be found by using matlab and it allows to get a deeper insight into the system so this summary concludes the presentation